In that evening, did you give to your kids something like copal to help them sleep? You know, we're not going to comment on anything, but, you know, there is absolutely no way we used any sedative drugs or anything like that. And, you know, we'll, we have cooperated fully with the police. We'll answer any queries, um, any tests that they want to do, at any I point. got nightmares in my head, I fear that's good up until I can't My mind fills up into a creature and it haunts me somewhere much deeper. I got nightmares in my head, I fear Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Curiously, although the toxicology tests were negative, in official police statements, several individuals who were questioned made reference to the use of a medication known as Calpol. For example, Jerry McCann's older sister Patricia, who works as a nurse, let slip during a statement on 15 April 2008 the following. As far as I know, the children did not wake up frequently at night. There could have been occasions when they went to see Kate and Jerry. It depends upon the time the children were with them or were sent back to their rooms. With regard to medication, I only remember them being given Calpol to lower their temperature and certainly never to make them sleep. Never. Now, I want you to listen to the question. It's a question about Calpol and how it's answered. Does he ever say, no, I never gave them Calpol? In that evening, did you give to your kids something like Calpol to help them sleep? You know, we're not going to comment on anything, but, you know, there is absolutely no way we used any sedative drugs or anything like that and you know we'll we have cooperated fully with the police we'll answer any queries um any tests that they want to do at any point so the question that is asked is did you give your children calpol and jerry answers there's absolutely no way that we gave any sedative drugs and so what he's doing is he's grouping calpol under the umbrella that Calpol is a sedative drug. And I guess within that, he's saying, no, we didn't. And it's a really long answer to a question that should really, the answer should simply be no. Did you give them Calpol? No. If you didn't give them any sedative drugs, well, then the answer is no. So why even bring that up? And if the answer is no and you never gave them Calpol, why is Jerry's sister Patricia in this statement from the 15th of April 2008 saying, I only remember them being given Calpol. Now, Kate McCann also admitted having Calpol with them in Portugal and in apartment 5A in an official police statement made on the afternoon of September 6, 2007. And this is quoting from the PJ Files, quote, Before they left, she, meaning Kate, took some precautions. They put the medicine inside a bag with a clasp in her room, inside the wardrobe or the dresser. These were Calpol, in brackets paracetamol, and Nurofen, in brackets ibuprofen, for fevers and pains, both for adults and children, liquid form for children. In this bag, there was also a small pair of scissors. In the kitchen were cutting elements used to prepare the meals and which were not put out of sight. During their trips, it was normal for them to take these medicines. During these holidays, she never gave any medicine to her children, nor did Jerry. She now says that Jerry took medicine for acidity called Losec, which they also possessed. Now, the bottom line from that statement is that apparently they had Calpol with them in a medicine bag in Praia de Luz in Portugal. Then there's also a third instance from Janet Kennedy, Kate's aunt on her mother's side, who revealed the following insights about Madeline during official police questioning on the 14th of April 2008. Quote, When Madeline was born, the entire family was present to help support Kate, who did not return to work as she felt her, her place was at home. Following the birth of the twins, she only returned to work part-time when they were one year old. I remember that in the beginning, Madeline did not sleep well at night and needed much attention. 
Because Madeline did occasionally have bad nights, Kate arranged a bonus system. She would get up in the middle of the night, would go to her parents' room to ensure they were there, and would return to her own bed. This situation had gotten better before they went to Portugal. The bonus system appears to have functioned well with Madeline. She also had one for swimming, if I remember well. The kitchen was replete with bonuses. I had a conversation with Kate regarding care of the children in particular, leaving the children to cry until exhaustion, and Kate and I both agreed that this was not correct and that the attention should be placed on calming them down. As parents, Kate and Jerry did not let their children cry. Now, we do know that this issue came up where the upstairs neighbors said she heard crying going on for 75 minutes until quite close to midnight. We've also heard Kate and Jerry explaining with a touch of irritation that it wasn't a big deal when Madeline brought up the fact that she had been crying. Anyway, going back to Janet Kennedy's statement, she says the following, Kate is good with motherhood. She's calm and has the, the capacity of maintaining equilibrium between the children and cares for all their necessities. This is the important part. I never saw Kate or Jerry punish the children physically, and as referred to previously in the statement, they make use of other strategies which the children seem to take well to. I never saw Kate or Jerry administer any type of medication to help the children sleep. Both Emily and Madeline have taken Calpol to control fever, but nothing more. So these are three instances where Calpol is mentioned once by Kate McCann, once by a family member on Jerry's side, and once by an aunt on Kate's side, all acknowledging that Kalpal was used or that Kalpal was present, but basically arguing that Kalpal is not a sedative, that it was used in other medical situations. And yet when the interview asked the question, did you ever use Kalpal?, Jerry seems to, by the way, answer the question. He seems to say no to that with, uh, within the umbrella of all sedative drugs or any sedative drugs. In that evening, did you give to your kids something like copal to help them sleep? You know, we're not going to comment on anything, but, you know, there is absolutely no way we used any sedative drugs or anything like that and you know we'll, we have cooperated fully with the police, we'll answer any queries um, any tests that they want to do at any point Now what's really interesting with this clip and you, you, sh you can play it over and over again and you should play it all over, over and over again is that Jerry doesn't answer the question, he says, he says at the same time that he says we will answer any question he doesn't answer the question in the terms that it's raised, which is, did you use Calpol to put the children to sleep? In that evening, did you give to your kids something like Calpol to help them sleep? It's a simple question that should have a simple answer. No. It doesn't need any further explanation. No, we didn't. Which kind of raises the question, what is the truth and what is the reality here? in terms of the legal aspect. And what I think is quite interesting is there seems to be evidence of a sort, certainly from, if one looks at the statements, that Calpol was present in apartment 5A based on what the files say about what was said in September and based on what other family members said. And one of those family members, interestingly enough, was Kate's father, who I think in a television interview also said, so what, maybe um, Kate, Kate uh, or, or somebody used Calpol to help the children sleep, so what? Now the interesting thing is the whole semantic game that is going on. On the one hand you could say uh, that Calpol isn't a sedative, and so even if you did use Calpol, it's not a sedative, and so... It, it, it isn't used anyway to help anybody sleep. And I think one's got to clarify that aspect. So the first question is, is Calpol a sedative? And strictly speaking, the answer is no. It, is, it tends to be used for other things such as um, uh, temperatures and you know, for other reasons. 
But the fact is, Calpol does have a sedative effect, or certainly it did, in the formula that it was as it existed in May 2007. And that's also quite interesting, is the medication has since been changed. And you'll see some keyboard warriors and some experts saying that this ingredient in Calpol has absolutely no sedative effect, and that may be true. But then there's another ingredient in Calpol that does have a sedative effect, um, I'll give you an example. Antihistamine, you know, the the purpose of antihistamine is to treat, the original purpose of it is to treat things like hay fever. But I take antihistamines literally to help me sleep. That's not the purpose for it, but it nevertheless has that as a side effect. What's also interesting is that there is this myth that came about that paracetamol doesn't have any sedative properties whatsoever, neither does neurofen. And th- that this was described as a widespread, widespread misconception that Calpol helps children to sleep. But one's got to look at the date of this particular thing. And it's not in terms of paracetamol or the neurofen that has that sedative property, it's something else, the antihistamine. If you do a study of Calpol and the ingredients, you've got to look at Calpol as it existed in May 2007, not the modern version of it. And at the time, Calpol contained paracetamol and diphenhydramine. Americans may know of an antihistamine known as Benadryl, That's not quite as safe as what people think it is. To be clear, there are a whole bunch of compounds that fit into the um, family, I guess, of antihistamines. And one example of those is diphenhydramine or Benadryl at the time, Calpol as well. It was actually such a well-known trend in Britain to sedate children, to calm them down, to put them to sleep. Some newspapers referred to that particular period of time as the Calpol generation in a news headline. In the Telegraph in 2005, the headline was, Are We Using Too Much Calpol? That was two years before Madeline's disappearance. Then also in the Daily Mail 2017, doctors are now being told to prescribe Calpol instead of antibiotics to children. And then there was another article in 2009 uh, describing the original formula of Calpol Night being discontinued and with specific reference to children under six years of age. Remember, Madeline was three going on four. Now, a few days ago, a journalist who named Sonia Poulton uh, participated in a video where she spoke about, first of all, I guess, the police's theory of what happened to Madeline, and I'm not sure if she believes it herself, but she basically was saying that Madeline may have been woozy uh, because of taking Calpol, and when Jerry was out in the road at somewhere around about quarter past nine, somewhere around there, Madeline got up, climbed onto the couch, was a little disorientated, and fell, and that is literally what happened. Let me give you a couple of reasons why that doesn't make any sense. Number one, if Madeline fell, let's at quarter past nine, and she was removed from the apartment by 10, 45 minutes isn't a long enough period for cadaver odor to, to develop. And bear in mind, cadaver traces were also apparently found in the wardrobe of the McCann's bedroom. So why was the cadaver transferred there in a scenario like this? The other issue is that would Calpol, and I don't, I'm not a doctor and I'm also not a parent, I don't know what parents might say about this, do you think two very small children, if given something like Calpol, would be absolutely asleep in the way that the twins were? Do you think Calpol could have that kind of sedative effect for several hours You know, nothing waking up these kids for such a long period of time. And then I think the third question to ask, which is kind of dealing with some of the other questions that are raised, is did Madeline die of an overdose? And I really don't think that is likely to happen with Calpol. And so the question that I think should be asked isn't about Calpol. I think Calpol 
opens the door to something else, which is were other sedative drugs uh, used here? And if so, what were those drugs? I don't think the sedative that was was used, if one was used, was Calpol. In terms of the toxicology, you'd want to know what is the sort of half-life of these com- uh, uh, compounds. If there was antihistamine, how long would it remain in the system? Would it build up in the hair? Good question. What about some other kind of compound that is typically used, let's say, in anesthesia? I'll put a link to this question and Jerry's reaction in the description, but I want you to look at both Jerry and Kate's demeanor when the question is asked. Kate looks very subdued. She blinks quite slowly. Jerry looks kind of amused. I must say, as a doctor, uh, this is a very, very serious question to be asking, and he answers it with a lot of kind of verbal diarrhea and a lot of extraneous information, but without actually answering it specifically. And I think the specific question requiring a specific a specific answer is firstly, did you use Calpol for that particular purpose? That's the first question. And the second one is, did you use any other sedative medication? And although he says he's happy to answer any question, that's the question that needs to be asked. That's the question that needs to be answered. Unfortunately, where we are in the legal setting, it can't be answered because there is no way to prove that it was at this point in time. And so we are at a sort of a position of stalemate. I do think that Kelpol takes you in that direction, but it's not the answer to the original question. Does that make sense? Thank you for listening, and I'll see you guys next time.